The Ugly Duckling, published by Fidel Publishers. Text by Emma Fucci. Once upon a time, a duck sat on her nest in a big farmyard. It was almost time for the ducklings to hatch, and Mother Duck was growing tired of sitting on the eggs all day. It was such a slow job. She was eager to get off the nest and join the other farm animals. Finally, the eggs began to shake. The ducklings were hatching. One egg cracked open, followed by another and another. Mother Duck quacked with joy. The newborn ducklings practiced quacking as they looked around the vast farmyard. I hope you're all hatched now, Mother Duck said as she stood beside the nest. But the biggest egg was still lying there, unbroken. Mother Duck sighed and sat back down. How much longer is this going to take, she wondered. Just then, an old duck waddled over to visit. He asked Mother Duck how the babies are doing. The ones that have hatched are the loveliest duckings I have ever seen, she replied. But that big egg still hasn't hatched. The old duck peered at the large speckled egg. Why, that's a turkey egg. There's no duckling in there. I'm sure of it. Leave it alone and go teach your ducklings how to swim. But Mother Duck was sure that the egg would hatch soon. So she sat on it some more, waiting for the last baby to hatch. Finally, the egg began to crack and out tumbled the biggest duckling Mother Duck had ever seen. But he wasn't just large, he was funny looking. His gray feathers looked dirty next to the bright yellow feathers of the other ducklings. What a great big duckling, Mother Duck explained. He doesn't look like the others, but he can, can't really be a turkey, can he? I guess we'll find out tomorrow when I take the baby swimming. The next day, Mother Duck and the babies waddled across the farmyard. When they reached the river, the ducklings jumped right in and they tipped over at first, but they were soon upright and their little legs paddled beneath them. Mother Duck watched proudly from the riverbank. Well, she said to herself, that big gray baby is certainly not a turkey. Look how well he uses his legs. What a strong swimmer. He's my own little one, all right, he's, and he's almost handsome when you take a good look at him. When the ducklings finished swimming, it was time for them to meet the other farm animals. Come now, Mother Duck said to her babies, don't be scared, look alive, and don't turn your toes in. A well-bred duckling turns his toes out just like his father and mother. Now, bend your necks and quack hello. As the ducklings quacked hello, the chickens, geese, and other ducks glared at them. There are too many ducks as it is, cried an old goose. And now we have to deal with this new bunch too? That big one is so ugly, he's hurting my eyes. Leave him alone, Mother Duck said as she flapped her wings. He may not be handsome, but he is happy and he can swim beautifully. In fact, he's a better swimmer than his brothers and sisters. While the other ducklings explored the farm, the big duckling was jostled and pecked by the other birds. They laughed at his size and teased him for being so funny looking. The poor baby didn't know what to do. He felt like an outsider and was upset at being teased so much. The next day, the big duckling was picked on again. The ducks nipped at him, the geese honked angrily, and the chickens pecked his feet. Even his own brothers and sisters made fun of him. And so, it went every day until the gray duckling couldn't take it anymore. He decided to run away.
That night, the duckling hurried across the farmyard and hopped over the fence. As he flew across the field, the birds in the bushes twittered excitedly. Who's that big gray baby? The little birds asked each other. They are afraid of me because I'm so funny looking, the duckling thought. He was growing tired but decided to keep moving. He finally reached a quiet marsh and settled down to sleep. At sunrise, the great duckling was woken by a loud quacking. There were wild ducks living in the marsh, and they were quite noisy. The duckling swam out to meet them. What kind of duck are you? asked the wild ducks as they stared at him. You really are quite strange looking, but we don't care as long as you don't eat all our food. The ducklings stayed with the wild ducks for several days. They weren't exactly kind, but at least they stopped teasing him. There he met other birds too. Two big geese had come to visit the ducks. Listen, said the biggest goose. Why don't you fly away with us? There's a nice flock of wild geese not far from here. They honk beautifully and can teach you how to talk like us. The duckling thought about the goose's offer. Would the other geese be kind to him? Before he had time to make up his mind, a loud bang, bang filled the air. The two geese fell silently into the water. They had been shot by hunters. The wild ducks quacked loudly as they flew out of the reeds. The hunters had surrounded the marsh, and their hounds were running toward the water. The poor duckling didn't know what to do. The terrified duckling hid his head underneath his wing, but a hound quickly found him. As the duckling trembled with fear, a slobbery dog lowered his huge muzzle and sniffed the duckling. But just as soon as he had appeared, the dog bounded off. I am so ugly that the hunters don't even want me, the duckling said as he sighed with relief. He stayed perfectly still until the hunters dog and their dogs left. That night, he was much too nervous to sleep, so he decided to leave the marsh. After a long journey, the duckling came upon a cottage. An old woman and a hen were sitting in the sunny yard. The woman's eyesight wasn't very good, and she thought the big duckling was a plump duck that had strayed from home. She smacked her lips at the thought of eating duck eggs and invited the duckling to live with her. The old woman was kind and the great duckling was happy that she didn't tease him, but the hen kept asking him when he was going to lay an egg. When he said that he couldn't lay eggs, the hen laughed at him. Then what are you good for? she asked. The duckling felt quite sad. He was restless in the cottage and longed to go swimming. He decided that it was time to go on his way. <clears throat> the next day, the duckling left the cottage. He soon found a big river and dove right in. He swam about happily, looking around his new home. Autumn had arrived, and the leaves were turning red and gold. The sky overhead had a frosty look, and the clouds looked like they were full of snow. The ducklings shivered at the very thought of winter. Autumn turned to winter, and the gray ducklings shivered every day and every night. But at least the river hadn't fully frozen, so he was able to spend his days swimming. At long last, the snow began to melt, and the grass began to grow, and it was springtime. One warm day, a flock of large birds landed on the riverbank. The duckling hid behind some reeds and watched them. They were dazzling white with long, graceful necks. They were swans. The duckling stared in wonder. Before long... The swans spread their broad wings and flew away. As they flew higher and higher, the duckling felt a funny feeling. He spun around and bobbed his head up and down. He let out a cry that was so shrill and so strange that he startled himself. The swan turned back toward the river. They had heard him. The majestic swans landed on the river looking around for whoever had cried out to them. The duckling gathered all of his courage and left his hiding spot. When the swans spotted him, they spread their wings and rushed over to meet him. 
The duckling became frightened and his head under and hid his head under his wing. But there on the surface of the water he saw his own reflection. He was no longer a clumsy, ugly duckling. He was a majestic swan. He cried out in surprise as the swan swam up to him and stroked him with their beaks. The other swans bowed down to him. They had never seen such a handsome swan. As the other swans praised his beautiful feathers and the graceful curves of his neck, he thought about how he was teased and scorned for so long. But then, if he hadn't experienced so much sadness, he wouldn't appreciate his newfound happiness. He ruffled his feathers, raised his slender neck, and let out a happy cry.